Now, when you ask someone about the best industrial robot or humanoid bots, we all turn our heads towards Japan, right? And why do you think that is? Yes, these guys love to automate everything in their hands, and this time they're moving towards something big. Thanks to its highly competitive research development and applied technologies, Japan is now successful in the robotics industry. Robotic advancement has the ability to completely revolutionize the Japanese lifestyle. Since the 1970s, Japan has prioritized robotics development. Previously, industrial robots were employed in industries such as electronics and automobiles. However, the use of industrial robots has become so critical in various areas in order to lessen the physical stress on humans. Japan has long been a world leader in robotics, and now the country's main goal is to incorporate robots into daily life. They are a staple in many Japanese families. Robots offer a safer working environment while increasing productivity and product and service quality. People in Japan greatly enjoy robots the most. The one and only reason for that is everyone is familiar with the type of industrial robot that made significant improvements in performance while Japan's economy was booming. And now they are planning to introduce humanoids in several sectors. In addition to nursing and social robots for the old and sick, the Japanese have created robots that can battle fires, hold large weights, and provide physical therapy to patients. And, as we said in one of our previous episodes, the Japanese market for love robots is also one of the most evolved in the world. Many of the robots being built are learning to do multiple functions rather than just one in their most sophisticated forms. It is worth noting that the Japanese are more comfortable with accepting robots as family members than Westerners. You might think, what is the reason behind this? One reason can be found in Japan's religious foundations. Unlike the Judeo-Christian past, the Shinto religion or way of life incorporates animal ideas, infusing inanimate objects with soul and personality. They think that the true essence of any product or living person can be reached through a great design process. Instead of human outsiders, Japanese politics and industry react to a sense of expanding citizens through technology. Want some link to this fact? Well, if you examine official Japanese government documents on AI policy, it reveals an obvious link. The Japanese government has established the goal of having every home adopt a robotic lifestyle by 2025, which includes safe, pleasant, and convenient living with the assistance of companion robots. The 2025 vision contains a depiction of a day in the lives of the Inobis, which is an ideal, fictitious family. The Inobis are your standard future Japanese family a heterosexually married couple with one daughter and one son, the husband's parents, and a robot. The robot in the Inobi scenario is labeled masculine. However, the government study contains multiple female robots as nurses. The Inobi wife has the strongest bond with the household robot. After all, according to tradition, the robot is the one that helps the most to lighten the difficulties of her role. Robotics, ironically, serve to preserve the traditional family model in a close-knit community while also advancing a biological replacement program. In a technological twist, innovation is intended to maintain tradition. That's what they mean through this step. So basically, the function is to care. In Tokyo and Osaka, you may find robots like Pepper and Paro, which are meant to give not just knowledge and physical solutions, but also emotional and relational assistance. Pepper is a genderless, talkative, childlike humanoid robot that is already available in the markets. Pepper is the first social humanoid robot to join the mainstream market, costing less than $2,000 US. Despite the fact that the robot is officially genderless, the press and even Pepper's inventors refer to him as he. Perhaps you might as well. He's short, made of gleaming white plastic, and has wheels. He has large black eyes with blue flashes, and guess what? He's cute. He was developed to seem like a kid and to become a member of the family. Pepper understands a wide spectrum of emotions, from pleasure to grief, wrath to surprise, and adjusts his behavior according to the mood of the people around him. Pepper comes with a three-year guarantee, and the buyer must sign a user contract vowing not to use him inappropriately or in indecent activity. Pepper was taught to be a hospital receptionist during COVID-19, welcoming patients, checking temperatures, and enforcing hand sanitizing. Pepper, in a more therapeutic capacity, has also been used to alleviate loneliness in elderly patients due to nursing shortages. Next, we have Paro, who is a lovable baby harp seal robot that has been around since 2003. 
Paro as well is another social robot. Paro is a therapeutic robot that is intended to generate warmth, emotional reactions, and relax patients in hospitals and nursing homes. It has fur, its whiskers respond to touch, and it responds to petting by wagging its tail and fluttering its eyelids. Paro reacts to noises and can recognize names and faces, including its owner and its own face. Cute, isn't it? In addition to sponsoring research for bots like Paro, the Japanese government has supported the development of various types of robot in elderly care facilities, such as robots that can guide patients in Tai Chi and assist with physical therapy and rehabilitation. The Japanese Robear, a glossy white robot, can lift and transport patients. Other robots, such as Saya, developed at Tokyo Science University, are being developed for conventional nursing jobs. Saya accepts long-held gender stereotypes and nursing traditions by wearing a white nurse uniform and a blue hat over her long, silky hair. She has worked as a teacher in addition to being a nurse since her upbringing. And trust me, these wide eyes and endearing giggles can really make you fall in love with them. Let me ask you guys a question. Is it important to us as humans if the other side is experiencing or simply pretending to feel? Does it matter if it isn't a genuine animal, if it works and people feel happy when they connect with bots like Paru? Well, the aging issue is both real and urgent. Nearly 40% of Japan's population will be elderly by 2055. Women live longer than males, making them more vulnerable to the physical and mental issues of aging, such as loneliness, dementia, social issues, and immobility. Women are also the primary caregivers for aging relatives. So it really makes it a necessity for these kind of robots. Human value systems do not have to fight with one another. Robots can improve our ability to detect and encourage empathy, resulting in greater integration of elderly care. As society navigates the realities of the future, the social integration of robots and the value of human care can be mutually reinforcing. All right, we went through the immensely developing Japanese robotics industry, but how did it all begin? There must be a root for all this, right? Well, there's one for Japanese tech as well. The Japanese feel that Westerners approach robots with skepticism, seeing them as job killers or soulless devices. If the image of the Terminator robot is so popular in Western culture, the image of the robot as a savior is dominant in Japan. Following the destruction caused by World War II, the recovery and reconstruction of the country were mainly dependent on contemporary technology and robotics. Robots became human-like, compassionate, and friendly superheroes in post-world Japan. And guess what? The robot rescuer became rooted in popular culture, beginning with the hero prototype Astro Boy. Astro Boy was brought out in 1951 while Japan was still trembling from the nuclear disaster of World War II. Japan has been the biggest player in robots for many years. If Tanzania's old divide gorge is the origin of humanity, Japan is the cradle of humanoids, having developed the first humanoid robot in the 1970s and several variants thereafter. Japanese robotics introduced the concept of infused artificial intelligence. While the West was more concerned with mathematical algorithms, Japanese universities thought that maybe all of this AI innovation should be created alongside, or rather, within a real artificial body. Anyway, let's see what else Japan has in store for us. So coming to the end of today's episode, what do you guys think? Is it cool? Anyway, do drop your views in the comments section below. We'll meet again in another episode.